The public has sent a decisive message to Labour tonight. They've had enough of the drama. Labour's series of scandals is centred on a downward spiral. With our latest to News Hub Read Research poll giving National and ACT the numbers to comfortably form a government. Well, our political editor, Jenna Lynch, is here with the numbers. Kia ora, Jenna. There will be no happy chappies or chippies in the Labour camp tonight. Labour diving back down to the low 30s to 32.3%, a drop of 3.6 points. The exact same result it got in this poll just before Christmas, before Jacinda Ardern stepped down, before its great recess. Reset. Labour's loss is Nationals' gain, popping head and perhaps not quite shoulders above to 36.6%, up 1.3%. The miners are having a major moment at inching toward the teens, 12.1%, up 1.3%. And the Greens shooting up to 9.6%, up 1.5 points. Moving to the minnows, look out, here comes the comeback king, New Zealand first, 4.1%, up 1.1%. Is Winston on his way back? Te Pāti Māori slipping slightly, 2.7% down, 0.8. Top drops to 1.5%, down half a point. New Conservatives, no change. Seats in Parliament, where it counts, 61 is the magic number. Labour's 42 and the Greens 12, that's 54 miles off. Assuming Te Pāti Māori wins an electorate seat, they get three, even adding that to the left, only 57. There is no path to power here. But Nationals 47 and Act 16, 63 seats. The government benches are wash with blue and gold, the right commanding control. Here is Labour's small saving grace, the PM's popularity. 24% chose Chris Hipkins as their preferred Prime Minister, up a smidge, while Nationals got its own personnel problem. Luxon's likability, or lack thereof. He's fallen to 15.9, down 0.5. And his mate over to the right is gaining on him. David Seymour, 10.9%, up 3.4 points. But like him or not, on these numbers, Luxon's party is heading for power and the Hipkins' honeymoon is a distant memory. So that's 70%. A chocolate cup of comfort never needed more. So what would the sugar content in one of these be? Because there's nothing sweet about this. Labour is losing it. I think New Zealanders will have seen the government's been dealing with some pretty gnarly and difficult issues. And we've had a few issues internally as well. That's an understatement. It's been four months of ministerial mayhem. Oh, there's no question that that will have had, um, played a role in the minds of voters. The Kitty Allen car crash, just the latest challenge for the relatively new Prime Minister. It's one of those things which I found incredibly difficult and I'll be really open about that. We asked in the poll, did Chris Hipkins handle the situation around Kitty Allen's resignation well or poorly? The majority backed him. 53.3% said Hipkins had handled it well, while only 19.5% said he handled it poorly. The rest weren't sure. You can look back in hindsight and say, would I do things differently if I knew then what I know now? Of course I would, but I didn't have that information at the time. Labour getting sympathy from their mates. They've obviously had a very bad month, but honestly, I've been in worse situations with less time to go before election day and then gotten into government. Without drama to deal with, Christopher Luxon's been getting campaign fit. Honestly, it's all about managing energy. Everything in life's about managing energy, not time, so, and time as well. But. But time is running out for Luxon to prove he's likeable. They don't necessarily think that people have to like their Prime Minister. Uh, what I'd say to you, I think they've got to know that they can trust myself as Prime Minister. Do you think New Zealanders trust you? Yes, I do. I think they do. No, they don't. We know because we asked voters whether they trust the leaders. Only 35% said they trust Luxon, a drop of 1.9 since we last asked in January, while the number who don't trust him is growing, 46.9%, up 3.1 points. The PM's trust is falling away too. 51.5% trust him, down 1.4, but still still a majority, though those who don't are growing. 34.9% said no, they don't, up eight points. You know, we've got to really sharpen up. I think I've made tremendous progress leading this party. Across the board, voters are drifting away from the two motherships. ACT is no longer driving to survive, it's threatening to overachieve. ACT will actually be over 15% on election night. The Greens want their slice too. Every vote matters and that your vote matters. But they and Te Pāti Māori need Labour to pull ahead. Currently the left has no path to power. Are you gutted to hear that? 
No, because I always said we're not left, we're not right, we're straight up the guts. And it looks like there's still something special up the red team sleeves. I think New Zealanders will see something different from the Labour Party and I think that our numbers are going to go up. Keeping the goal simple. We've only got one plan and that is to win. Still plenty of fight left in the boy from the hut. OK, Janet, well, how much will Labour be hurting tonight? Well, if these are the election results on October 14, it would be nothing short of a bloodbath in the Labour caucus, making some educated assumptions about electorate seats. These are the Labour MPs that are at risk of losing their jobs. They rode Jacinda Ardern's red wave to Parliament, but the tide is going out. Labour was given the gift of a reset when Chris Hipkins took over. It has been wasted. It now needs a reboot to get voters to forget the shambles. You need a whopper of a policy to do that one that is totally irresistible to the swing voting centre. It is not fatal for Hipkins, but they are bloodied and limping. They need to get out of the fog of war of Parliament, out onto their preferred battleground, the campaign trail. That's where the Prime Ministerial gloves come off and Labour can unleash its political scrapper.